I often hear people say that they are spiritual, but not religious. I find, however, for myself, that the times when I discover I am at my wit's end, when I have nothing left, when I have no direction, when I don't know what the next step is, in those moments, I tend to be religious, but not spiritual. Ruth Violet Britland was born on June 24th, 1929. She was the daughter of Grace and Samuel Britland. Ruth was the oldest of seven children, children who made the local newspaper as all of the siblings were born on different days of the week, starting with Ruth, who was born on Monday, and continuing on with each sibling being born on the next day of the week in their own respective year. Through her long life, I first met Ruth when she was 53, and I had just been born. To me, Ruth was simply Grandmom Hilly. Grandmom Hilly died in early 2008 during Holy Week. Being a second year seminary student, I was learning and serving at a parish on the south side of Chicago when I got the call from my dad and the information about the funeral arrangements that were set for Holy Saturday. So I did my part in worship that Maundy Thursday. I caught the red-eye flight from Chicago to Philadelphia, went to the visitation on Good Friday, and then the funeral on Saturday morning, before finally catching an evening flight back to Chicago, where I helped a congregation celebrate the joys of the resurrection of our Lord the very next day on Easter morning. I remember that Maundy Thursday well. We had worship with all the usual parts, the forgiveness of sin that gave such sweet release after going without forgiveness since Ash Wednesday. There was the Lord's Supper, commemorating that night when Jesus first instituted the sacrament with the words, do this in remembrance of me. And there was the stripping of the altar, that slow and methodical pantomime during which the table of our Lord's Supper transforms into a tomb hungry for the body of Jesus. I remember the bus ride to Midway Airport, my journal in hand, the travel from the terminal to the plane, to the sky and back, all the while thinking, remembering, praying and writing writing and writing some more, trying to come up with the right words to say, the right words to say at the funeral, and the right words to say on Easter morning. My brother picked me up that evening and drove me to the Philadelphia Protestant home. That was the community where my grandmother had enjoyed her final years of life never having to cook for herself or worry about the weeds outside, though Grandma Hilly did always worry about the weeds outside. My parents had rented the family suite at the Philadelphia Protestant home so that all of us could be together as a family for those 30 hours or so as we remembered Grandma. I put down my garment bag, tried to lay in bed with my eyes closed, 
but felt at the exact same time both overwhelmed and completely empty. I had no idea what to do next. So I laid there in bed, my parents and my brother in the next room, but they all felt a million miles away. I picked up my journal and looked inside, but the ideas I had written on my journey seemed to be in a foreign, foreign handwriting. It didn't look like mine. So I stood up and I walked out into the hallway. I had been to the Philadelphia Protestant home enough times to know that the building was a closed loop so I couldn't get lost. And so I began to walk. But then something happened. As I turned that first corner, still overwhelmed, still empty, still having no idea what to do or say next, I began to softly hum. Walking through that building, I softly hummed all the hymns that I could remember to myself. Not knowing what else to do, looking for answers, I went to the songs of worship that I knew to comfort and to soothe my soul. It was not what I would call a spiritual moment, if anything, it was the opposite. I was spiritually depleted. I was not looking out into any kind of connection. I didn't want that. I couldn't handle that. In that foreign place, feeling broken, empty, and overwhelmed, standing in a hallway, I found myself looking into a future that included both the sadness of the tomb and the promised celebration of Easter. And as I stood there, I realized I had no capacity to understand my next step. And in that moment, the power of religion took control. It led me through, and it took care of me those next three days. What happened next? Through Grandma Hilly's funeral and Jesus' resurrection? Me? I went to worship. I let the power of worship, the nuances of our religion, lead and guide me when I had no idea what to do next. Today is Monty Thursday, and Monty Thursday is on the precipice of life. This day is our entry into the three days. Here we teeter between joy and confusion. We teeter between life and death. On the same day, in the same hour of worship, celebrating our absolution from sin while preparing for death. Historically, the Lord's Supper is shared on Monday Thursday. And we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, knowing that in moments the table will be stripped bare. The table of the Lord's Supper will be transformed into a tomb, hungry for the body of Jesus. Because in truth, the Lord's Supper is the last supper. 
in the face of such a night. Jesus showed the disciples a new way to serve as he washed their feet. In the face of such a night, Jesus gave the disciples a new commandment to love one another just as I have loved you. In the face of such a night, Jesus gave them simple tasks to hold on to so that when things seemed to go awry, when the world seemed out of control, or simply they just didn't know what to do next, they did now. Now they knew. The rituals of our religion have carved a path through our souls from our hearts and minds, a path that shows us a way to make it through. Through the celebration of life and the sadness of death, a way to make it through when we cannot find the words ourselves. We need not worry, because those words and actions are already there. These rituals and songs and prayers and worship carry us through as we try to make sense of it all. As we remember that the table is stripped as it saddens us, because we know that one day life will be stripped from us too. Through it all, the rituals of our religion carry us, teaching us and reminding us of the sure and certain hope that if we have been united with Christ in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Amen.